Africa and the world and welcome to competition day three of World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022. This is Skills Rising with me Ilago Shitatala. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now almost a hundred competitors from Africa from the across the African continent are competing in different skills areas to see who will be crowned cham African champions at the uh, crossing ceremony this closing ceremony pardon me this coming Saturday on the 2nd of April. Competitors are well on their way, completing different challenges in their skills areas, from serving cocktails in the restaurant service section to building elephants in Brick Lane area. Now, this competition is opening the eyes of visitors to the possibilities that can be found in technical and vocational areas. Stay tuned because later in the program, we will have analysis of different areas. But first, let's take a look at some of the highlights from competition day two.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are still watching Skills Rising here at World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022. And we are focusing on different skills that are part of this year's competition. And hairstylist responsibilities include cutting hair, using basic and advanced techniques, consulting customers about styles and colors, and also applying hair care products like treatment oils and masks. We are now joined in studio by Gottfried Marino Kanji, who is the workshop manager at the hairstyling skills competition. Good morning, Marino. Thank you very much for being here. Good morning. Mm -hmm. How are you this morning? I'm very well. Thank you so much for asking. I I'm good. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, Marino, today is competition day three. We've passed through competition day one and two. For those who are not in the know, please take us back in time. What was competition day one and two like for that particular skill? Mm, competition day one mm -hmm. uh, was actually about um, uh, ethnic hair our African Caribbean hair, which was the Kelly ones, Kelly to Kingi hair. Uh, they were supposed to do some braids on the side and curls on top. Mm -hmm. That was just a small outdo hairstyle, but with a little bit of touches on the sides, on both sides. Mm -hmm. But the judges were only looking at one side, which was the one side of the picture that they gave, and the other side, it was with the competitor in, um, to decide what will they put on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And competition day two? Competition day two, was a woman, uh, ladies Abdu hairstyles. Mm -hmm. uh, the ladies Abdu hairstyle is like the evening hairstyles that you wear when you're going, when you're going to the gala evening dinners and so on. Mm -hmm. So they were doing the, the ladies hair, Abdu hairstyle, which was just a bowler, a mm -hmm. bun at the back. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that, I mean, I was quite um, impressed about the competitors. They knew what they were doing. And uh, it's not easy, but it's hot in there. It's definitely hot. It it's must be hot. hot now, there. we do have a camera currently there at the workshop that is at the hairstyling workshop. And as we see here, uh, please talk to us about what's happening. Who is this competitor and what exactly is she doing? This competitor is uh, uh, the lady from South Africa. Okay. Um, today's task is that uh, they're doing a men's haircut and color. All right. Yeah. A man haircut and color with uh -huh. a little bit spiky hair on top uh -huh. that is just going to stand up. That's why they pattern, um, um, they are pattern in a V shape. Mm -hmm. uh, these competitors are quite skilled. Mm -hmm. It's not just they are young people, mm -hmm. but they're quite skilled. It's not just young people that are coming up mm -hmm. to take chances, and they are very very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the South African competitor mm -hmm. busy with the men uh, cut and color. Mm -hmm. How long do the competitors have for this hairstyle? The competitors have about two and a half hours. Two and a half hours? So, yeah. For How far point. long are they at this point in time? About five, ten minutes now mm -hmm. to go into. They just started about quarter, quarter past nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what exactly are the judges looking for, particularly when it comes to this hairstyle? Um, the judges are on, not only looking at the hairstyles alone. Oh. Yes. What else are they looking at? They are looking at your knowledge. Uh -huh. What do you know? about um, what do you know about doing hair. Mm -hmm. They are looking at, for example, you're doing a color. Mm -hmm. They want to know how many grams are you mixing. Mm -hmm. So there's a scale on top of the table just when you walk around. There's mm -hmm. a red scale, mm -hmm. especially the one that you see right here. Mm -hmm. So that scale is for the competitors to, to weigh their thing, to mm -hmm. weigh their products. What, what grams are they using? If I give you 15 gram to mix it with 10 gram powder, mm -hmm. you need to do the exact same things. Mm -hmm. They also want to know the techniques, the way you hold your equipment, mm -hmm. how you do it, mm -hmm. and how you start and what techniques are you using mm -hmm. so and and this competitor who is she this one is from uganda uh -huh. her name is kathy mm -hmm. she's one of the bravest ladies that you can find on set mm -hmm. today uh, not today but all throughout the competition okay uh, she came along with no expert with no expert at just all. alone alone at the competition at that alone, must be a lot alone of pressure at the on competition her. yes she came with uh, the other Ghana, ugandan team mm -hmm. but then every competitor has their own expert mm. but this one just came alone and she's doing quite good mm -hmm. she's doing um, really quite good but mm -hmm. um, she's a bit calm mm -hmm. but you know it's a competition at mm -hmm. the end of the day talk us through some of the other competitors that we have in this competition yeah we also have um, we also have DRC, All right. uh, where we have a translator on board that mm -hmm. is have to actually translate because we can speak uh, the Bonju, Bonsoir, Gomasava, all those languages. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Ghanaian competitor, mm -hmm. uh, the one wearing a white um, scarf. Uh -huh. um, it's uh -huh. it's for, yes. for Ghana. And then we have the host nation. 
the Namibian the competitor. Na the Namibian competitor. Mm -hmm. She's right there mm -hmm. at the back. I'm not actually, I'm smiling because we at least have a host, I mean, a, a person in the competition the representing us. Yes. But um, she's doing quite good. Mm -hmm. I cannot say much about it, mm -hmm. but... Um, I'm very impressed. Mm -hmm. I'm actually impressed about all of them. It's getting emotional inside there. Really? It's not just easy. People are crying. People are going into the back room to shed a tear, whether mm. you are, how brave you are, it's not easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to come up with uh, giving them more time, mm -hmm. but the task project is set already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, is this the only task that is uh, scheduled for competition day three? We have another one in the afternoon. All right. But the, through what that uh, one would be like. But the task is only revealed 15 minutes before. Oh, yeah. all we, right. We reveal 15 minutes before, mm -hmm. and then they get that 15 minutes also, mm -hmm. just to work it in their mind mm -hmm. that this is what we're going to do. And then we say, let's say if, the, if it was 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. then caught up as you start. Mm -hmm. so. And these individuals standing in the background observing, are those the judges? Those are the judges. Mm -hmm. They are from different countries. One from each and every country except the, the Ugandan one that is not there. Oh, yes. So when it comes to marking, um, no Namibian expert is going to mark a Namibian. No All South right. African expert is going to mark a South African. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they stand aside and then and the rubric that they are also using is quite good. Mm -hmm. They look at the weight, whether the person can be able to do it, whether the person followed the picture, that the task that they were given. They look at a lot of things, but I think uh, when it comes to the rubric that they're using, it's quite good. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll, I've, learned, I've learned something from it, and I'm oh. going to use it on our vocational when we are doing a practical marking. All right. Yeah. And now let's talk about this competitor here. Who is she? She's a, a Nell. A Nell. Yeah, we, we don't know actually competitors by names. We yes. know them by number. Competitor yes. number one uh -huh. up to number five. OK, this is the South African competitor. Mm -hmm. The most confident one on set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's very, very confident. Oh, she shows the confidence. I also mm -hmm. see that she's ahead from the Ugandan competitor that we were looking at. Yeah. All right. Uh, but when it's, it's a competition. When it comes to the final product, Yeah. <laughs> People are doing an amazing job here. All right. Yeah. So what does this mean now? After competition day three, what is next for the hair styling uh, category? After competition day three, this is our last day. All right. For the competitors to compete. Okay. Tomorrow we might open for the competitors to, in order for them to show as hairstyles if they want to show a different techniques that they wanted to show, but it's not for the competition at all. Mm -hmm. But this is the end, our competition ends today, and then the marks will be set up, like as they are putting up the marks all throughout the competition, uh, the result is only gonna be known at the final day when everybody's gonna be announcing the winner. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Marino, for being here. You're welcome. All right, and Thank all you. the best with competition day three as you're wrapping it up the, at the hairstyling workshop. Thank you very much. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that was Mary Nokanji, who is the, uh, the, you are the? The hairdressing workshop manager. The hairdressing work workshop manager here at WorldSkills Africa Swakopmund 2022. We will be back shortly. Stay with us. Mango, head of marketing and branding for Standard Bank Namibia. World Skills Africa, I think it was not a thing that we had to think about in terms of how we can support this forum and initiative and it's also not our first time as a brand to be part of this journey. It's something that we believe in and skill is a as an important thing. It's a currency, you know, with, without money or currency you can't do anything. Skill is that one thing that can differentiate you as an individual and we believe in developing and helping the journey of developing skills in Namibia. Uh, my name is Roy Nasi Andrea. I'm a competitor. I'll be taking part in the World Skill Africa Swakop Moon 2022 in the hairdressing area. I'm looking forward to go learn new skills 
and for exposure and um, most importantly to go and have fun. My name is Emma Shilongo and I'm the owner of M Spirit Parlor and I also happen to be the national expert for Namibia in the hairdressing department. First year's preparations were quite well because we had um, a bit of time to prepare our competitor uh, to equip her with all the skills that is needed. Also mentally to prepare her that it's okay to do good and also to do bad, to also just have fun and to enjoy the experience. It's the experience most of it all because you're going to, to they get to meet people from all over the world. I mean now it's Africa so we are more than ready. Everybody wants to look beautiful every morning, so when they stand up, they want to show up. By showing up, you look beautiful. And hair, and hair is one of those things that just brings so much confidence and self-esteem. When you look at society nowadays, and it's something, it's, it's something that is actually missing in a lot of the youth. And I believe, uh, and also with when you look at our SMEs, it's quite a lot of them out there. And we want to support and uplift them, and also just create that, that um, hope that we are there to support and make this possible because with Senefang it can be. We're there to make it possible, we're there to support them through the journey and also to support their vision and, and dreams. We are still focusing on the various competition skills that we have here at World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022. And this time we're just giving a focus on fashion technology. Now, fashion designers sketch designs of clothing, footwear, and accessories. Fashion designers create original clothing, accessories, and footwear. And they sketch designs, select fabrics and patterns, and give instructions on how exactly to make the products they design. Now, to discuss this with me, I'm joined by Biata Shinana, who is the national expert at the fashion technology department. Piata, good morning. Thank you very much for being here. Good morning, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Biata, I would like us to walk through the fashion technology, specifically from day one and two, competition day one and two. Briefly, just take us through how those days were like, what was the task that the competitors were given, and how did they execute them? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, fashion technology consists of four modules, mm -hmm. which are the um, pattern making, draping, mm -hmm. sketching, mm -hmm. and the final one is construction. So day one, they did pattern making. So as we know that you cannot make a garment without uh, making a pattern. So they have to make patterns. So mm -hmm. it was given three hours. Mm -hmm. So in that three hours, they are given a technical drawing. That means that a design mm -hmm. of the uh, garment that are going to make. So they make a pattern out of that garment. Mm -hmm. so just to stop you there, because I for those of our viewers who don't understand what pattern making is, is it sketching the design that they should make? Yes, it's a sketching of a design on the paper. On paper. But more like you are sketching a part of it. For example, you are making this part here, so you need to make a drawing on the paper. Uh -huh. Then that is what you are going to cut out from the fabric. Uh -huh. Then you go to the machine and stitch it. Ah, Yes. all right. So that was the first module. Yeah, that is the second the, one. The second one is on the draping. Mm -hmm. Now, on the draping, you get a style. Then you are going to drape that style on the mannequin. Mm -hmm. So that style, you drape it and it must reflect the exact style that is on the paper. Mm -hmm. So you drape it like you pretend like you are stitching the garment mm -hmm. and you put it on the model, mm -hmm. and, but you only do it with pins, you mm -hmm. don't stitch. Yeah. So, so that basically, is again, just for the sake of understanding this in layman's language, when you're talking about draping, does it mean you're dressing the mannequin? You are dressing the mannequin, uh -huh, exactly, right. yes. And the third module? And the third module is sketching. Mm -hmm. Now. 
uh, every fashion designer, when you are making something, mm -hmm. you have to sketch it, you have to put it on the paper, like you are planning for a house. Mm -hmm. Before you make a house, you have to make to have a plan, you draw how your house will look like. So that is the same as sketching. You have to draw the design mm -hmm. of what you are going to make. Very clear. Thank you very much for that explanation. And the last module? And the last module is construction. So they are constructing, that means that they are going to make a real garment now right. with the theme of Mary uh, Africa. So there's elements that they need to look at. Um, mm -hmm. If I have to go through quickly yes. to it there. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, asymmetrical, that means that it must not be straight, it must be like asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Then we have a dropped waistline. They have, that dress have to have a waistline, must be a dropped waistline. Mm -hmm. Then we have a stand collar, I like to call it a Chinese collar. Mm -hmm. So it should have a collar, which is a stand collar, mm -hmm. and pleats. So that means that the dress must consist of pleats as mm -hmm. well, and the last one, pockets mm -hmm. and they have 12 hours to construct that which, which is broken down in two um, days for mm -hmm. example day two day day One. two which was yesterday they um, did five hours mm -hmm. today they will do six hours mm -hmm. and the last uh, hour is tomorrow which is uh, five one hour sorry mm -hmm. all yes. right thank you very much for that clarification now let's talk about competition day three at which level are the competitors at right now as we see it on our screens um, they are busy with the construction, as you can see, they are busy constructing their garment. Mm -hmm. In this element here, that is where we are going to view their creativity. Mm -hmm. What, even though they are given a theme, of all of them they are going to make a dress mm -hmm. but what make your dress to stand out yes. from the rest mm -hmm. so your creativity is one of the things that we are going to look at mm -hmm. and also the final production the construction how are your lines are they clean did mm -hmm. you press well or not mm -hmm. so that is what we are looking at mm -hmm. you said the theme for this garment that they are to create is Mary Africa yes explain it to us in detail is it a wedding dress that represents Africa what do you mean by Mary Africa okay um, Mary Africa, that means that they are going to uh, make a dress as long as in that dress we are, want to see something that is representing or that is telling us that this is African. Mm -hmm. So they are having two pieces of fabric. One is printed, which is more about African, it's more about printing designs, and the other one is a plain one. So they have to know how to play around with the printed African to reflect mm -hmm. the, the, the theme. Mary Africa but it doesn't really have to be a, a, a wedding dress it's just a normal dress with the theme of Mary Africa mm -hmm. now Beata this is very interesting as you've explained it I also now want to understand apart from these finer details what else are the judges looking forward to um, as I said the creativity Ne? Did the, 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 the competitor put in all the elements that are needed? Yeah. We are talking about a dart to shape out. Yes. We are talking about did she pressed nicely? Yes. We are talking about the overlocking, the finishing part. Is it neat or uh -huh. is it just threads that are hanging uh -huh. out? We do not want to see that. Uh -huh. Because like you are wearing your nice um, jacket <laughs> on top there, it's well finished. Uh -huh. That is the final product we want to look at. You know, Beata, as I'm speaking to you right now, I'm feeling a little the judge because you're mentioning the threads hanging is it nicely pressed and I'm wondering if when you're looking at me what are you seeing from my outfit because I believe it's also representing the the African continent yes definitely I even wanted to ask who dress who is your designer <laughs> for that it's looking beautiful I'm um, looking at the style lines yes. the dark I see is well pressed it's uh -huh. well stitched mm -hmm. so overall you look very beautiful uh thumb out to, that to the designer. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, so here we see a sewing machine. What are they doing here exactly? Uh, this is the overlocker. They mm -hmm. are overlocking. That means that they are finishing it, uh, the seam line. It needs uh -huh. to look nice. So this is just to finish out. Uh, we call it overlocking or finishing the edges. Okay. Yeah, this only play one part and that is overlocking, but mm -hmm. it cannot stitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it cannot make a straight seam. It can only overlock. And it's having certain parts. She's busy overlocking. It's also cutting 
to just align the edges. It's cutting as well? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yes. How many competitors does fashion technology have? We have four. Yes. Four competitors. We have a competitor from Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have competitor from Uganda. Mm -hmm. We have competitor from uh, South Africa, just to mention. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it's a male competitor, and All I'm right. very happy with that. And we have a competitor from Namibia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what the Wall Skills Africa Swakopun 2022 emphasizes is that um, these roles and, and tech different skills are not gender based. You find men doing uh, skills or working in skills that are commonly known by four women and vice versa. So who is this competitor that we see here? Uh, that is a competitor from Uganda. All right. Yes. Okay. And where is she headed to now? Uh, I think she's going to the table of uh, stitching machine where the, that machine only stitch straight lines or she's going to iron or anything that she want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, you say that they, com they complete their tasks tomorrow. When should we expect the results to be out? Okay, because uh, we normally start at 8.30, mm -hmm. with the competi competition start at 9, mm -hmm. so and it's one hour, probably by 11 we are done. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. All the best with the rest of the competition. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, that was Beata, who is a national expert at the Fashion Technology Skills Department. We will be back with the next skill shortly. Stay with us. My name is Eckhard Forster, I'm the Managing Director of Afrox in Namibia. Afrox and skills development has, got, has, has become synonymous over the last couple of years. As you are aware, we also have the Afrox Leadership Academy, which is also about youth and skills development. So for us, the World Skills competition is a natural fit. Uh, skills development for the youth is close to our heart. And because it's a competition, someone needs to win. We are of the opinion that the participants they have to work with the best gas um, that they can and therefore handy gas is a good fit for the competition. For all the corporates, I mean, it, it, we, we, we're in unprecedented and tough times, but I think um, this event here showcases if everybody makes a small contribution, we can, um, we can host a magnificent event um, and we can make things happen. And that's my, my message of encouragement is just contribute, uh, doesn't matter how big or how small, it makes a difference.
Now, as you've just seen in that insert, all roads are leading to Shanghai in October. That is for the World Skills International, and those who will make part of this will be the champions of World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022, representing the African continent. Now, we move on to the next skills area of focus that is welding. Welders work with different metals to cut and join everything from steel, beams to pipes, plates, pressurized vessels. Now, they're being, they do this by being able to operate various types of welding equipment both safely accurately and that is the most important part of welding and to discuss that I am joined by Lonia Shihepo who is the national expert in the welding skills good morning Lonia thank you very much for being here Thank you. Good morning, Elao. How are right. you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks. Lonnie, I think it's very important that we just touch on uh, competition day one and two before we head into what's happening today in the World Welding Workshop. So please just uh, give us a brief background of how that was. Okay. Just to give a brief background of what's happening, mm -hmm. actually we started on a very nice notes like when you are going in a restaurant yes. you want to eat yes. so they will save you you must have a starter then from the starter you have the main course yes. then after the main course you should have a dessert and that's how welding is and right? that's how welding explain is explain to us how. that's how we started off so mm -hmm. we started off with something called coupons we have in the coupons we are including there some pipe work mm -hmm. welding we have the butt joints welding mm -hmm. and then we have some fillet weld joints there mm -hmm. in the coupons. So mm -hmm. that was a starter, mm -hmm. just to make sure that these competitors are ready mm -hmm. for the main course, mm. just to prepare them, just to release the fear in them. And then the second day, they went to the pressure vessel, and that was the main course uh -huh. to them. So whatever they did in the first day, the pipe welding, the fillet joint, the butt joints, now it comes to the real project, which is the pressure vessel. Uh -huh. Everything that they did in day one is now on a pressure vessel as a complete project uh -huh. where they have to weld with different process and different welding positions. So these things are interlinked? Uh, all, all these things are in. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the welding process, when we are talking about welding process, we have arc welding, mm -hmm. that is stick welding, mm -hmm. we have MIG, mm -hmm. that is metal inert gas welding, and we have TIG and that is tungsten in it gas welding. Mm -hmm. And then now, day three, they will go to the, uh, to the desert, mm -hmm. where they are going to do a stainless steel project where they are only using TIG. So whatever you see there, that is a pressure vessel, that is the main course. Mm -hmm. You can see some pipes there where he's doing the pipe works, welding, and then you can see some the fillet joints somewhere there, mm -hmm. and you see also the pipe joints, mm -hmm. but in different welding positions. Mm -hmm. So the way that pressure vessel is standing is going to weld it on that position. So the base plate or the metal plates on a flat position. Mm -hmm. So wherever he have to weld on a horizontal position, then he must do it. Wherever he have to weld a, a vertical position, then he must do it. Mm -hmm. You're Accord saying you're describing this as a pressure vessel. Yes. Where is it going to be used? Uh, this one is not really going to be used anyway, yes. but we are only testing them. Yes. For instance, maybe the person has to do a boiler, yes. or the person has to weld a tank. Can he be able to weld a tank without any leakage on mm -hmm. it? So that's a pressure vessel. So they are welding that pressure vessel. We are going to inspect it or to mark it visually. Yes. We are going to mark it using measuring instruments, mm -hmm. and we are also going to put it on a pressure testing. Mm -hmm. So to find out if there is a leakage somewhere, mm -hmm. then that person failed. Because welding is not just a matter of you there with the fire you see. Mm -hmm. It needs to have quality in it. Because, All right. uh, if you have an old car, I can sell my car. Yes. Do you know what I will do? I will paint it nicely. It will look nice. Yeah. But if you go inside, it's rubbish. Mm -hmm. So it's also up to welding. So the it needs to be can, neat. It has to be neat, but also of quality. Uh -huh. Not just to look neat outside. So why are we doing the pressure testing? To find out, is it of quality? Mm -hmm. Or it has some leakage mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this competitor. Yes. Who is he? 
the competitor that we have or the countries that are taking part in welding competition, we have South Africa, our neighbor. Yes. We have Ghana. Yes. We have DLC Congo. Yes. We have Namibia now, the host country. We have Uganda. We have Rwanda mm -hmm. and we have Zambia. Oh, that's that's quite a we lot. Have of we have seven. We have seven competitors yes. in this competition. Yes. All right. Now this is mainly a male-dominated industry. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any female competitors? No, often now we don't have a female competitor, but doesn't mean this is only for male. Yeah. As even female can do it because I'm an expert mm -hmm. for welding mm -hmm. and I'm a female. Mm -hmm. So this is work for each and every person. Everyone is welcome. Welding actually is a really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting work. Mm -hmm. Now, Lonia, what I'm seeing very different about this workshop, the welding workshop, is that it has these plastic covers. Yes. Why are they there? Those plastic covers are just to protect you, the person who is out there without... Mm -hmm. Can you see that red? That's a welding helmet. It uh -huh. protects him from the rays, from the welding that he's doing. Yes. Because the moment you don't have that, it can affect your eyes. Mm -hmm. It can go with something called an akai. Mm -hmm. Akai, you see, your eyes will become heavy. Mm -hmm. You feel like they send in your eyes. You cannot even open. You can't even close them. So that helmet protect them. Mm -hmm. But now you, with us, the expert in the area, what mm -hmm. will protect us? Mm -hmm. We don't need to put a helmet, but that shield protect us from mm -hmm. that. So safety equipment is something that is very important in, in, in welding. In welding, safety equipment is important in welding, just like in any working environment. Safety mm -hmm. is very much important. The person is doing the person is doing welding, the person should have their welding helmet on, they need to have the leather gloves, they need to have the apron, they have, need to have spats, mm -hmm. they need to have their mask on. Mm -hmm. Lonia, safety is very much important. Very much. Thank you so much for that yes. explanation. Now, what is next after the competitors are done with competition day three? Uh, what is next is for them to do the dessert I talked about first, yes. to do the stainless steel project, mm -hmm. where they are only going to use stick on a three millimeter plate to produce that project. Mm -hmm. That will be our day three, mm -hmm. the dessert, just mm -hmm. to calm them down. Mm -hmm. yes. And competition day four? Competition day four. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. That's when they will finish this one. All so right. actually. They finish today. Uh, they will finish the pressure vessel and tomorrow they will do the stainless. Uh -huh. The pressure vessel is something, it looks small, yes. but it has a lot of work. So yeah. it will take two days for them to finish it. Uh -huh. At least it's the 10 hour project. Uh -huh. And what are some of the challenges experienced by welders in, in, in the normal market? Mm, challenges yeah. that welders experience, yeah. Maybe equipment, is it expensive? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welding is a very much expensive trade uh -huh. or field yeah. or skill because those machines are expensive. Mm. Just for you to have that bottle gas you see there, mm -hmm. it's expensive. Mm -hmm. But we can do it, but those are the, some of the challenges we have. Just to buy some of the material, especially aluminum and stainless steel, some of those materials are very expensive mm -hmm. to purchase comparing to other trades. Mm -hmm. Their trade is really expensive, but though it's interesting. Mm -hmm. yes. As we're wrapping up our conversation, because you made mention of the cylinder, the gas cylinder that is at the back there, mm -hmm. and we've seen it at every workstation of the welders, mm -hmm. what is its purpose? The gas, gas cylinder, yes. The gas cylinder, we mostly, we use gas cylinder when we are doing MIG, process welding and then tick. When mm -hmm. I said metal in it, gas mm -hmm. welding, and also when you do tick, which is uh, tungsten in it, gas mm -hmm. welding. So we need the gas flow just to prevent our beads from contamination. Mm -hmm. It helps with the arc shield of the beads. Mm -hmm. So it helps a lot in welding when you're using tick and make a uh, welding process. So mm -hmm. we need the gas. This one you see on the moment the person is welding make, then we need uh, a tick, then we need argon, and mm -hmm. we also have carbon, and we also have argon shield mm -hmm. to use when we are doing uh, gas welding. Lonia, thank you very much for making time to speak to us. We'd now like to, we would like to let you go and get ahead with the competition. Yes, but can I say something? Yes, please. Thing? Because I feel like people don't understand what is welding actually. Mm -hmm. But welding, even the building we are standing on, we couldn't have roof on it mm -hmm. if welders were not there. Mm -hmm. So those big metals you see up there to make to come up with a roof is welders that have to do that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we can't be here mm -hmm. with shell on top of us. Mm -hmm. The bridge that I built in uh, in the 
road when the car have to go through. So it was a welder that was up down there. Mm -hmm. So bricklayer, uh, joinery, so these people work together. If one of them is missing, then their job will not be complete. Mm -hmm. So welding is just as important as each and every any trade in this world. Mm -hmm. So welding is interesting. And please, female, come on board. Yes. Thank we you. really Thank need you, to show our talent yes. because we can also do it just like men. It's yes. not a man field, but female, we are also woke. Yes, we are also strong enough to be able to handle welding. Very and welding nice. is very important in construction, as you mentioned. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here, Lonia. All right, thank you. Well, that was Lonia Shihepo, a national expert, talking to us about what's going on at the welding competition stall. As you can see there, it's quite busy, very heated. Competition is going on. We will be back after this break. Be a man of bravery, how quick I say get one. This is what you are, go quick as a hooker. This is what you are, go quick as a hooker. You are still watching Skills Rising right here at World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022. TVET reforms in Kenya reflect on integrating global best practices to link the TVET system outputs with labor sector requirements. TVET reforms aim to provide the Kenyan labor force with market-oriented training, a structural ability to adapt quickly to changing circumstances and market needs, high quality in teaching through comprehensive and continuous teacher training and system. Now, in our next story, we meet someone who is a product from this fast-developing TVET system. Let's take a look.
Abari Yako. My name is Shraddha Shah and I'm from Kenya. Since it's the first time uh, Kenya is taking part, the Tiveta organization had come to our school and that's how we heard about it. I'm doing the restaurant service. That's the skill I'm taking part in. So restaurants, in restaurant service, as it says, it's in the restaurant. In the restaurant, you get all different kinds of people. And in that, I chose it because I want to meet different kinds of people. I get to interact with uh, people from all over the world, uh, different cultures, different races. You get to know more about people, as well as, yeah, just get to learn how people like to do their things. I think Namibia is very pretty, it's a very beautiful country. People here are very friendly, they're very nice, everyone's always helpful. Um, yeah, it's a very nice country where people have been very welcoming. So in our department we're four girls and one guy. Uh, and we are already pretty close, all of us. Uh, we, there's one girl from Madagascar, there's one from South Africa, and one from Congo. Um, yeah, we've become pretty close friends, we've uh, got to know what each other like. Um, why they are doing this and yeah, stuff like that that has made us like already kind of like a small family and yeah I think it is the latest things it's what we use also back home for our training so I do think everything is up to the standards that are there right now um, like the wine glasses there's the cutlery that we use the fish covers for example these specific fish covers specific meat forks and that's like another interesting thing when uh, you actually present these to some guests, some guests do not know what the cutlery is used for. So during such um, events, it's a good opportunity to explain to people like what each glass is used for, what each uh, specific category of cat, uh, cutlery is used for. It gives me happiness. When you serve a guest and they're happy, you see them satisfied, it gives you a different kind of happiness. It feels like you've achieved something. You never know when a guest walks into a restaurant or into where you're serving them, what they're going through. Just you being friendly to them, you being uh, welcoming to them, just by your service, saying kind words. There's not like, you don't even be over friendly, just simple kind words, kind uh, messages could like maybe change someone's day, someone, like whatever they're going through. Maybe they're, yeah, having a sad day and you just see something kind, which changes their mood, they're happy, they enjoy their food that gives me a different kind of joy. The contestant for Kenya, or the competitor for Kenya, uh, uh, is Shirada Shah. And uh, having the skill, you know, when we, I, I was her trainer when she was in the first year. And I could see how uh, she was, you know, energetic and, you know, special skills, uh, passionate about restaurant service. Um, and it's not all about restaurant service alone, it's an aspect of hospitality management, the entire thing. I saw her stand out from the rest of the students and I would say that this one will go far. I would just encourage the African youth to um, put themselves out there. I don't think there's any skill in the world that is minor. Whatever it is, whatever anyone is good at, whatever they think is good for them they're good at it it's never too small like i think people can go really far in whatever they think they can do and i think that the young people in africa should actually start um, pursuing these things because sometimes we have a mentality that some specific kind of jobs are for like minor people and there's some for the clever and smart people but i think there's nothing like that and that's what world skill is trying to um, show as well that there's no such thing as little or small. Everyone has a specific skill. So I just encourage them to pursue their skills and their desires, like what they think they're really good at, to keep pursuing them and go ahead. So anane badaye. And with that, we've come to the end of another exciting production of Skills Rising right here at World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022. Do join us again at 12 o'clock Central African time, where Friend and Thomas will be giving you an in depth analysis of what's happening here on the World Skills ground from the competition and exhibition side of things. And later in the evening at 7 o'clock, where Patrick Sam will be having a discussion on TVET based on the conferences happening here at the World Skills competition as well. From me, I'll see you tomorrow morning with the rest of the crew. Goodbye. Be a man of bravery. How quick as